Are you a Christian who has experienced persecution? I was telling my husband yesterday, I've never really experienced real persecution for my faith. I have never been thrown into prison or shed blood for my faith. However, I have experienced persecution for sure, to some degree, from various places, just for believing in Jesus. What about you, Christian? If you were persecuted, would you be able to stand on your faith, or would you give in and deny the name of Jesus if your blood should start to flow? Scary thought, but it's good to think about it. Well, the church in Smyrna is a persecuted church who experienced tribulation. They experienced poverty, prison, blasphemy by religious people, and even death for their faith. Thank you for joining me and welcome to my channel where love abounds because God loves those he corrects and teaches his ways. This is Shoshana Salgado Muniz with you again. I've been following the Lord closely for 19 years. Of course, everybody has their ups and downs. I admit to that, but I've learned many things on my journey. So our message from God today is for you all who pertain to the church of Smyrna. I know Smyrna was actually a Greek city located on the Aegean coast of Anatolia. However, the seven spirits of God and the seven churches are spirit form so the church of smyrna can be spiritually anywhere in the world yes the holy spirit is one spirit but is manifested seven ways in the church basically the churches god is warning in revelation are the different types of christians around the world which is you and me. So here is the message to the church in Smyrna. Revelation 2, 8 through 11. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say, says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So God's message to the church of Smyrna isn't, hey, I'll make sure you get out of here so you don't have to suffer at all. No, the church of Smyrna is a suffering church. He even warns them that they might even die. That doesn't sound so comforting, right? Instead, he gives the church of Smyrna a timetable, meaning the persecution won't last forever and tells them, to be faithful to God unto death. So I'm sure you can relate to pain. Mothers who have had children who have given birth know what it's like to be in pain. Well, you know the pain doesn't last forever. Then after you have a baby, you forget about the pain when you see the beautiful baby in your arms. I'm just painting a picture for you. When you get to heaven after suffering for Christ, the joy that fills your heart makes you forget about your suffering completely. The last thing mentioned in the passage is that they that overcome won't be hurt by the second death. I know this is very foreign to many of you. It is basically the final condition of man after his natural death on earth. It is the ultimate unending separation from God. To me, that is the scariest thing imaginable. So, my advice to you, church, is please overcome. God wants you to choose Him 
and to choose life. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. 1 Corinthians 1.23 says, But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. And John 4.14 4, says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Lastly, Isaiah 50 verse 2 says, Is my hand shortened at all that I cannot redeem? So, dearest church of Smyrna, wherever you are in the world, Dearest suffering church of the world, I encourage you that your inheritance in heaven will be great and it will be an eternal one where no thief can break in and rob it from you. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Confess your sins and repent of them. Believe in the one true God of Israel. Believe in the Messiah. Jesus Christ and be saved. He's coming soon. Maranatha.